well in other fandoms, well known. I give regular workshops on conventions, worldwide even. <laughs> so, and well, I try my best in my life to make nice fursuits and nice looking costumes. So, I make costumes since 1999. Uh, came to the costume making, we are a performing job of a mascot. So, while I was in the university and I need some money, <laughs> <laughs> and desperately get this job as a walking character, as dragon going around in the stadiums in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> so that's so also sorry about my English, maybe. If I'm going too st strong in the Australian accent, just tell me that. <laughs> because I live most of the time in the outback of Australia. So, okay, I started the costume making in 1999 after my job in Australia. So. Then making a couple of costumes, well done. Put up my experience, what materials, what to get, whatever. So, okay. We start now, how to make a fursuit. How we start, what materials we have. I reckon you guys never done that before. Somebody done a fursuit before or something like that, or a costume maker is a tailor or something? Cos One, two. Done fursuits. Yeah, well. It's textile, so, and you trail, uh, you're creative, so it's all right. So, even she? Other ones? No? Upholstery person? Oh, no? good, okay. So, basically we start with the pretty basics, preparing. So, the best to prepare is to have this tape dummy. What is a tape dummy? It's actually a copy of you. So, looks strange, I know, that's actually me, and this part, you see that? Ah! I have to work on that. So, <laughs> so this, this guy always reminds you when you come into the workshop. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, okay. How to make just something like that. So, basically you need packing tape. You know this, you know this brown packing tape? From parcel making or something? Yes? Okay. A rope. A seidel. Almost for non... English speakers, and you need a painter's dress. That's the first it starts. So painter's dress you get in a home improvement store, the packing tape even in a home improvement store, or via eBay, the famous uh, seller. Don't make any advertisements for them, okay? So, and the rope, which you get in, oh, is it a home improvement store? Whatever. So basically, um, yeah, you start, Without clothes, just with underwear. Well, you, and you need two friends, of course, because somebody has to cut you out later on, out of that stuff. <laughs> so, and the first start is, when you see that, see that now, that's I am, with underwear, naked. Don't see, don't imagine that. <laughs> and then you have this rope. The rope is about five, six meters long, and you glue, you glue the rope straight on the skin with, uh, painter's tape, e easy sticking tape, from here over the back to the another arm. Then you go down the back and then the rope down there and another leg down there. Stick and bell on, that's fine. So, then next part, put on the painter's dress. It looks funny, doesn't matter. You don't see him light on. Then you put on the painter's dress. So, stick it on. Place them, and then your friend coming into games, or two friends, better. Because it takes you about, if you experience 45 minutes to tape someone, if you're not experienced and first done, to about maybe two hours. So, and for the guys who inside, it's stressing. <laughs> and try to get a well, a good airflow to the room that it gets cooled down, so it gets also hot like in the first year later on. <laughs> then you start first with the extremes, starting the taping here. And very important, don't stretch this packing taper. It goes, to get, goes, back to get, uh, goes back to the original. So if you stretch it and put him over it, his blood circulation will disturb. <laughs> so he gets blue maybe. <laughs> so we don't want that. So just roll this packing tape on, like, well, I have not the right one here, but just the thing is, ah, come on, 
open it before and then stick it on and very lightly over it. And start from the extreme parts like here and the arms like here. So you fit the painter's dress right on. So further on you start sticking this tape here, here, here around, around the legs here, around the legs here, around the legs here, and then later on there that you get the angle right down there and the angle here of the arm. Like here, you see, that's, ah, should be there because later on you attach your arms on that. <laughs> so, okay. Then you start wrapping the first line very lightly because on the second line, one you do it, it automatically gets flatter. And the third layer, it's get really flat. On the fourth layer, it gets smooth. <laughs> and you make the fifth layer, then you can, make him really smooth, rubbing over, over, over his body. If you finish that and you get something clear like that, then start cutting out the, cutting out the guy or the women. For that, somebody in the internet says you need a sizzler from um, first aid sizzlers, whatever. Forget that shit. You make three cuts and the thing is rotten. <laughs> this stuff is, rots just this, this metal piece of it or the, the cutting area. So the best what I use is cutters, very sharp cutters. So you must have good patience in your friends when they cut you out. So, but here comes the rope into the game. We place before the rope and that's now our line to cut them out. Just stick your finger where the rope starts and, and try to cut them on the rope out. So the, the knife goes on in the rope and cut them out. Oh, one piece, piece on piece, piece on piece on piece on piece. So, and when you do it, you take five minutes to get them out. And just get this tape thing out of them. And he comes out very sweating and very happy that you not cut him. <laughs> so then basically we have the copy of this guy. So next step is well, you can stuff the thing up with old paper, foam, whatever you find lying around. I prefer old clothes and something like that. You get chucked old clothes inside. You always have to look that it gets really tight and tough. And always measure you that the tape dummy has the same measures than like you later on. In addition, what you can do, you can fit a structure in it, like I did here. You see this nice stand, well, we don't make advertisement for home improvement stores, <laughs> but it's cheap. So. Get something like that, weld it together like here, it's pretty easy. And so you can make a nice body modeling stand, which you later on need for making some attachments on the costume. So well, fit this plastic thing or mm, tech tape dummy, whatever it is then, over this structure or not and stuff it up. Paint it together, uh, stick it together and here makes this tape you making easy to get close together because it has some lines in it and the problem is always to stick it right to right side together again so not there's a disruption and a dis disturption in it. So look at the lines and glue it together. Stick just the tape on it, tape, 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 tape and stuff it. And later on if you finish that and cover the structure and it's well stuffed up, get another line with the tape around this whole thing and make it smoother again. <coughs> or if some, something is not right in place, just use the tape and put it on. So later on you have then this stand standing around where you can start making the tape dummy, the finishing the tape dummy. And now you can start with the first dude. Next thing is, we finished with the basic materials, machines. What do you have at home? A sewing machine? Somebody has a sewing machine? One, two, three. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> Ten percent. So it's no big deal. So you need a sewing machine. You can sew by hand, but it takes hours. And if you have patience, do it by hand. No problem. I recommend to get a sewing machine, and I recommend get an old sewing machine. Don't buy the new stuff from uh, the uh, discounter or whatever. Cheap rare. What we need is an old... 
We need an old machine who can really tough and is really tough. So going to a Salvation Army store or helping aid store or whatever and look there around. Usually they make they clean up houses and have from, from house cleanings, clean up houses, there's old sewing machines. You get it for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever. Cheap, but they are really good to get with the strong materials to it. And so you have your sewing machine. Uh, next thing what you need is a hot glue gun. You have, somebody has a hot glue gun? Okay. <laughs> hot glue gun we need, some needles, which you can buy on the famous internet stores. <laughs> Garment, thread, fabrics, that's later on. For the first time you can use old fabrics, like old bed line and what you have lying around. That does the job for the first time. So, we prepared the materials, so we can start now. Well, and here is show you the first pictures. Because we are lazy, and we know this famous internet store, we use a surface diving suit as a base for your body. As example, you also can use a lycra suit for gymnastics, or you can use eh, from horse riding multi sheer uh, dresses as base. <laughs> On this base, an uh, example here is a diving suit, which is used in one pony costume as a base, as first time, as a prototype one. Because that's good, that fits you very tight. And you can glue on that stuff, anything. <laughs> Hot glue, stick it on, done. <laughs> so, next thing is, because we prepare pre for our man, for our bodysuit, photograph it. Make a three, three, po three point view of it. And on this thing, this thing, you can draft your muscles on it, what you need later on. You know the ponies have this high legs, this high upper legs here, a bit up there, a bit muscle there, a bit well, we covering this mm. belly. <laughs> so fit something on here. So you can all draft it in and look mm, what could be the shape later on. So next thing. Here you see the muscle modeling. So we have this bodysuit on this tape dummy, like you see here. And then you just stick, in this case, just foam. Sting, uh, sorry. <laughs> it's German. It's absolutely normal upholstery foam you can use. You can use hi-fi foam, what you can place on walls or whatever. Even you can use used foam, what you find somewhere, but wash it before. Put it in the washing machine and clean it, and then you can use it for that. Stick that on with this hot glue gun material that you can put on, or use uh, another glue, shoemaker glue, an example. Or mm, Uhu Craft is one of the brands what you can use to stick that on this diving boot, on a diving suit. So next thing is, we have to model the muscles. Here, another place on another side. And uh, do you see it? That's, uh, maybe. Here it's better now. It's a step further, but we, we modeled now the, the whole muscles and whatever. And for that mus muscle, uh, mus muscle uh, modeling, you can use two things. One thing is a grinder. You know a flex from metal working? There's one that gives a, gives a, a rotating plate with a sandpaper on it. With that thing, an ice spray, you know ice spray from sports? Yeah. Spray the foam with the ice spray. It gets in another another hardness, and then use the grinder and form it. <coughs> like a, with a chainsaw, you form wood. Do it with the grinder, so you get these nice shapes and very soft surface of the of the foam. Later on, when you've done this all with the older parts, what you see here, with the upper legs, top legs the bags and whatever, you need to cover that stuff with textile. Why? 
because the foam is some sort of mm, stops the other fabric from going over it. So if you cover it, later on this fur fabric will softly going over it and going into foam when you move around. So it can move, the fur can move over your undersuit. Here you see the, another piece. Here you see the upper leg again, what I modeled before. Yeah, well, here are another pictures of that. Here you see exactly what I mean. The up, the pieces on the S are already modeled, and the down legs are just the foam pieces. So, why, for example, put something on the S on the pony? Idea? <laughs> it's a female. <laughs> And I'm just a male. <laughs> so I need to get more S and a bit higher the S. So to get a better looking later on. And to have this cutie mark better presented. <laughs> so the next thing is how we get these cuts to cover these foam pieces. Again, brown packing tape. It's the perfect stuff what we need for the first making. Get a couple of rolls of it. Just glue it over, stick it together, use a pen and draft around the surrounding line and the already cutting lines. Here in here see the cutting lines. The ladder you cut on so you can flatten that thing. You can do that by a computer program too, if you're very experienced with C CAD and whatever. But that's the basic thing. That's enough for us here. I still do that way too not just the computer way. So flatten that and make a, a pattern. That's it. So you have a pattern for later on for your front, if you copy the suit again. And for the cover of the fabric. Here you see the finished. So this undersuit is now prepared. Oh yeah, here we go, Fred. So well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we finished with the, with the body. We have the shapes now, what the, the pony has to look like. We're going back on the, on the first, put him in the corner, have a look on it. Is that the shape what I want to get? Now I can still work on it. Change it. Maybe draw, print out a, p a picture, what, what you draft with this, with this undersuit thing. Maybe get a picture of a pony. Mm, is the muscle the right? Maybe a bit higher, maybe a bit lower, whatever. Now you can do it. If you're finished with that, it's time to make the fur cover of the body. We want to have fur on it, or a colored looking skin, whatever. Here I experienced a very interesting techniques, which make it very simple. You know, from lady dresses, they have some sort of fancy taft called uh, uh, mesh structure thing for dresses. If you get them on rolls in the fabric shop, and this stuff is perfect. Just stick it on, and here, oh, the head, see that here? That's later on the cutting lines for your suit, where you sew the suit together. Because also, like the suit, you can't, just, you can't put just the fabric on it, and it's finished. You have to need some cuts there, cuts there, to get it closely to your body. And with this mesh, mesh fabric, you stick that thing on. Put the needles on your, on your body, on actually the muscle body. And then, again, use the pen and draft around. So you get all the structures, what you tell, as a cutting pattern. Later on, you cut that stuff out and flatten it again. Here you see the further going on the body, even the back. Here you see even, you can place with the pen uh, connecting lines, where you can fit back and front together later on when you sew it on. Very easy technique. And e even for somebody who never done a costume pattern, he should do that, could do it. So it's already understandable or need some description? Questions at the moment? No? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, the fabric for the ladies. It's it's a yeah. Okay. For dresses, you have some extensions down there to make it looking fancy, you know, pushing up the the, the, the dresses. Gaze, yeah, or uh, called tuft. Tulle, tulle is the very cheap material of the, very good for that. Looks like that. If you can look through it. It's very light and it's very cheap to buy. So that you can use for that techniques. Yeah. So when you when you're on that stadium, you put that stuff around, array, cut in the patterns and cut in where you have to connect them and swim later together. Flatten them. Here see again. And here's complete body. Here. It's now covered completely. So you see later on with that what you get. There's no you can't make a mistake anymore. Just cut out your fur, sew it together, and you have that like that. Okay. And now I'll show you how to make we go further. Here. What you see before, this mesh fabric, it's now flattened here. I used absolutely normal packing tape, packing paper for parcels to place that and go around with a, with a pen. Here you can make the additions because if you sew something together on a dress, you need an addition of about 8 millimeters to 1, 10 millimeters on top of the fabric to connect it. So here you just draft it down there on the packing tape and just in the pen and just add 10 millimeters roughly around the, around the whole thing. Up here you see it maybe with the difference and there if some additions need you just draft it on. You can later cut it away again if you have cut out the fabric. So, so here we are the next step. I already cut out all the fabric. <laughs> and to get really sure it fits, stick it on. There's your, there's your dummy. You don't broke away. So, and you can work on it. So you stick that together and look at place and all fits are together well. If you need some additions, here's a point to make it. So, we've been sure that it fits and then comes the sewing. Sewing together the fur, it can be quite complicated because if you get some type of fur, it, it's very slippery when it's putting together and doing the sewing machine. Stick it well together with, with needles every five millimeter a needle and go through the sewing machine or make it by hand. <laughs> Any questions at the moment, this step? All right? Okay. Here again. And now you see how it looked like with the muscle padding down there. See? You see the upper leg coming out, the, the hands, the padding's up there, the padding's on the ass a bit more. Well, we placed the cutie mark on it. And the wings later on. Yep. So. Here's another example. You can make even more patterns on it. If you have a fancy pony looking like, with many patterns, you know. We don't want just straight color, okay, I like straight colors, other ones have patterns. So you also can make the pattern metal. If you have this mesh on it, just draft with a pen your pattern on it. And then cut this pattern out and add, just add 8 millimeters or 10 millimeters to the pattern lines and sew them together again. And it fits also together, like you see here, that's an extreme example of it. That's a 36 patterns, the whole suit is 36 patterns. So together. It's for my for my wife. She wants to have a crocodile pony. <laughs> His her character is usually a crocodile, but she likes a bit having a pony suit, so we combinate and breed species. <laughs> yeah. 
So you, you can produce anything of your imagination, imagination on that material. Just add foam on it and make the cutting patterns over it, and that's it. So, the next one. What is it? Yeah. Here's another example of another suit who later on you see here. Here used in a different... Uh, I made this undersuit by myself. You don't need to buy it on the famous internet store. You also can use this mesh method even to make an undersuit for yourself. I for myself prefer have cotton, baumwolle, as an undersuit because I don't like lycra that much. So, uh, so I threw it together by my own. Uh, here you see, it's more clearly to see here with the, with the patterns. And because the prototype suit, what you see before, with the diving suit underneath, I made cutting patterns. So now, if I break a second one, I can use this, even for this muscle paddings down there. So next time I don't have to model with the grinder again on the body, so I just use standard foam plates, you know, what you can buy, 10 millimeters, and just glue them together, like the lining or the cover or fabric, what you do run before, and stick it on. So here you see also the addition on the belly and the, the upper legs. Then you, here's the next, in the future, what we could see in the next part, the hooves. With the thing, you also can place the hooves already on. That's even just foam, plate foam. Use just as plate foam, make a cutting pattern, and stick it, glue it together, so that you get the hoof. So it's a very light structure, and there's nothing in it. Stick it on, it fits right, and if you get those in the right pro 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 proportions <coughs> to the body. Here. That's the underbody completely with the muscle paddings. Without fur, without anything, no frills on that. So, any questions so far? Anyone? Okay, good. Um, so, the boot. I started with the hand boot, what I said in the future, we're going further. We also use here packing tape. <laughs> How we can use a, a, boot, a, a hoof boot? Easy. You know from the f home improvement store, Styro Farm, Styro Duo, work the isolating plates, perfect material we work with, glue that stuff together and use our grinder again and just model out the hoof. So you get a, a complete solid structure of your hoof and then just use brown packing tape again <laughs> to get your pattern. So cover it, make your pattern on it, flatten it, flatten it on the packing paper and make a cut out of it. So here you see, you only need a half side because the other side is the same. <laughs> so we will have symmetries. Here you see. And also you see here the lines. Again, this connecting lines where I sew it together or glue it together. So it will fit. So here on is the hoof now cut out of the foam. An example, here I use black foam. I get this. And just going around. That's a special poly polyethylene foam, what the mascot builders use. You also can use upholstery foam, the standard yellow foam, if you want. It's no problem. This is just a bit fancy stuff, a bit sturdier. Well, I have to produce it for people, so. And here you see the, the complete structure glued together with this method. Here another method what you can make a hoof. That's, you make a structure, like a skeleton, and cover it with poly, with this form, with the standard yellow form. So you get the shape out of it again. 
if it's right, it fits, it looks good, okay, done. And just, you see here where your leg going in there? Huh? Yeah, okay. If you're in that stadium, it's all right. And again, make a cut, flatten this form, and you have your cutting pattern. Any questions on that? Yeah? No questions? Anything clear with that? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Huh? Again, it's too, too far, come. Well, as a basic boot, because I have a flattened flatten down there, a flatten, using this form as a flat, as a standard stay, I use diving boots, which you can get really cheap, also on this famous internet store. <laughs> and it fits everyone. So you just buy the diving boot, fit them on, fit you, glue it on with the hot glue again. So you have your base, you don't have to worry man, again anymore how the, the hoof left, is left, leaves you when you're walking around. It fits perfectly and it's cheap. I think a pair of diving boots cost about 8 euros, 9 euros, 10 euros, something like that. <laughs> but the also golden rule of first suit making or making is get the easiest way and the cheapest way is mostly the best, most of the time the best one. So fancy material you can use, gives good effects, but maybe not necessary. You can make it with cheaper stuff. So this is another example of the hand hoof, what I have here with the black form. It's more sturdy than the, than the standard, oh, standard form. So. Next thing is about material with the fur. You know, most of you, are, there are a couple of furs available, very cheap quality. If you make the first suit, it's maybe an opinion, use the cheap one. Well, it rots away in after a couple of washes, but you invest maybe five, five euro a, a meter, that's it, and it fits. It's all right, so if the body suit fit on, uh, the first suit fit over it, so you can easily make another one because you made the cutting patterns already. So and use later on the good fur when you buy. Because good fur, high quality, costs you about 25 euros up to 50. <laughs> and you need at least four meters. Of, so it's 100 euro or even more, 200 euros, just on the fur. One color. And if you need more colors, it adds a bit. So. <laughs> First suit, use cheap material, it's all right, it's your first try. The second try it gets better. Same with mine. My first first suit was, I don't show. <laughs> it was all right. I still have to, have to suit at home. So, but I used also cheap, cheap fur and, mm, yeah, well, no. <laughs> okay. We're going further. Is there any questions anymore on the body suits to make? Oh, here, come on. Washing. Depends how you make it. Because if you use the diving boot, the diving suit as underneath, you only can make hand wash in the bath or in the shower. Just shower him. It's usually enough because any dirt or sweat going out. If you're doing like I do with the covers of the foam, you just can stick in the washing machine. Cold wash, that's it. That's I my suit wash. They're all made, ready made for the washing machine. Even the, the cheap fur you can wash. But, but, 50% washing powder, 50% detergent. Weichspüler, so the Deutschen Weichspüler, <laughs> to get it clean, get it soft underneath, 
and then put him out of the washing machine and straight on the rope and get air in it so that it fluffs up. If you don't do that, the cheap fur will suck down and <clears throat> looks crappy then. So, okay, another question about the bodysuit making. For the hooves on the hands, um, I imagine it as, uh, as really floppy if you just have nothing in there because they are really big, your hooves. Do you have some sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, level? level? I don't know the word. Lift? Ah, okay, you did. <laughs> yes. I place the... You can use this just stuff in and put your hands in, that's okay. The foam, what you fit into later on into the fur cover. Flop, uh, puff, what's that? Gives a structure for the, for the fur. But if you say make, make a plate, what's well like the front hoof, and with a handle, and just stick it also in it, so you can have this, the hoof later on like that. And you can more handle this hoof, it's not just flopping around there. So, I did that. <laughs> What's a really good question? The lady? Animatronics, no. I'm not an animatronics man, I'm more a mechanic person. Because I used electronic stuff on first suits and because of the sweating, it rots. It's, it's like poor acid when you use servos and whatever electronic devices. The sweat goes in and just rot the electronic devices. The servos get white, the, the bearings, whatever. At least maybe for three, four, five, six months, and then you have to replace it. So if you fit the stuff straight in, and you can't get them out anymore, mm. so it was a nice try, but... <laughs> yeah? Well, uh, I don't know if you are about to cover it, but um, what about moving jaws? Moving jaws? Moving jaws, because uh, when I tried to, to fill the first you had once, or not once, a few times, and I was always made with moving jaws. Okay, I come now to the point because now we discuss the head. A couple of techniques. So here is the moving jaw even. So the pretty basic version of making a, a head for, for you is using a balaclava techniques. That's some sort of a motorcycle covering for your head. And on that base you start making the head. Here you see that. I hope you see it. You basically need a head, use a head like that as a base and buy some a motorcycle covering for the helmet at a motorcycle store or whatever or the famous internet house. <laughs> and then just put them on this head. Maybe add something on this head because your head is maybe bigger than this guy. So, or buy a bigger one. It's also available. So, and then just stick it on and with the movable jaw going down that, that's the basic technique. You, you sew in elastics on this, that your movable jaw can go back. It's elastic from here. You see that line there? No? Okay. Yeah, you sew, you sew this elastic like here, under your chin. So if you move down, it goes back when you put the pressure away. So later on, so that's the basic. Elastic stripe there, elastic there, elastic there around. So if you put the, the motorcycle covering over your head, it just sits. <laughs> this is very important with the first suit head because it does not floppy around around your head when you're moving around. So, ah, it's so bad, I just can't see it here really. Um, yeah, here go further. That's a technique what I developed a bit. Other guys using foam, upholstery foam, and just glue it on the helmet, uh, on this, on this uh, cover, what we did. I was uh, using another method because I want to have the symmetry more. So what I used was a camping math. 
was lying around once and said, why not using this cheap material what they get everywhere in the motorcycle store, cheap camping meth, it's the same, actually the same material what they're going around here, a bit softer than this one, and cutting stripes and just construct with needles your head like a mesh production, like you're making three-dimensional modeling. Just get the round shapings and go from this part to find a more finer part. Here. This is the example of the dragon, dragon head. You see how I mean that? Yeah. Let's go further. It's now the stage where you can see uh, the head coming out. More dragon-like. I placed already the, the, the eyes in it. So I don't have to look around where I place the eyes later on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is one method, one part to another one. Here you can easily measure the symmetry by measuring the stripes together. Very easy technique and cost you maybe. <laughs> 10 euros to make it first you'd head. <laughs> the base of it at least. The other one is to use foam and glue foam together to get the shapes. And later on smooth them to have it. So another way, on this way you have all this foam on your head so it gets very hot later on. Here you just have a hollow structure. That's it. And you even can place a mesh in it where air comes rush, rushing through. It's a way one way. Other way is the foam, gluing together. More easy. Another easy way what I can use is again going to the home improvement store. Using again this wall isolation plates, duo duo, and building the head out of that stuff. It's also very easy. You cut out the plates, making a, 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 a box, and then you model your head out, straight out this material. Put them into pieces because our layers stay, and then cut out the inner side. I haven't got a picture here from that because it's a very old technique of mine. And glue the stuff together so you have your head again. Later on you place, you can stick glue on top and put the fur on it. So also very cheap, but more the traditional way of sculpturing. Hmm, okay. More questions on head making. For the pony costume, actually, when we have no movable jaws, it's actually the foam method, just taking the foam possible. The structure method is possible to get a round shape. Another way what you can use is to make a sculpture, what it looked like, like of clay, cheap clay, and make a copy out of what they call polyester resin. And we have car, car working stuff for car repairs. A, a hard shell is also possible. So what I do actually, I do hard shells more. So, but you also can use this stuff to yeah, make this shell straight on this uh, hard uh, structure what you modeled and stick it on and glue it together on that you have to hollow. Can you follow me a bit? Let's do it. Any questions? More questions? Huh? Yeah. The actual pony heads that you uh, made on the, on the top sugar. Come on. Yes. This pony head, I'm going for giving you to you. It's better to going around, giving around, just moving around, bit a bit careful with them. <laughs> or with her. This method is a vacuum forming. It's also very old forming. You need a plastic sheet, heat them up, and suck it around the foam with a uh, vacuum. You also need only need to, need to make a mold uh, and a form to make, where the rest have to fit into the machine where you make the vacuum forming. The problem is you need a proper vacuum forming machine, and these machines are expensive. So mine cost 24,000 euros. <laughs> you can make a cheap one. There are how to make 
uh, tutorials on the internet with a vacuum cleaner, with something like that. They work, no problem, but they're a bit more com complicated to handle. So you have to put a plastic sheet where you vacuum from that before in a baking oven. And it has to be yeah, getting melting and then in the right time you have to f start the vacuum cleaner to sucks around and have a look at the internet on these tutorials, uh, self-making vacuum machines. You, you see what I mean. <laughs> so I prefer to buy a, a proper machine for that. And uh, yeah, the, the positive things of that is it's very sturdy. It doesn't rot away. It's very light. And you can drill holes in it. You can fit a headgear in it who fits anyone. The Balaclav technique fits you, maybe two, two head size more, two head size less. It's, yeah, it's more open way of modeling. Other thing is complicated forms coming better out here. If you have shapes where you can't model out of form, because with addition of the fur, they're gone. Fur adds at least 10 millimeters. So if you make a fine modeling where you say, oh, you placed hours on work on that, Place the fur on it, gone. <laughs> you can work further on that. So, okay. Any questions more on head making? Yeah? How can you make the eyes so you can see through them? Okay. Eye making. Mesh. One way of. This is a mesh where you can look through and nobody can see you really because that's dark inside. So, give that around here. So you can use mesh for the eye making. You can use a metal mesh, that's actually a polyfiber mesh. You can use called uh, stramine, that's available in textile stores. You can use plastic sheets. That's used in the old days of fursuit making, even for heads. It's a very interesting material. <laughs> Here you can look through it, even. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I know it from my from my child's day in the childhood, childcare. We used to to have some 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 round pins sticking on that to make. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to make a boom, patterns or whatever on it. So, this stuff is sadly only available in the USA. So maybe in, in the UK, but I didn't see it in Europe already. Uh, in Europe, you also can buy it on, only on rolls with at least 10 meters. So, uh, a bit too much for us. <laughs> so, it's a way to work on that that stuff. We're going back to the movable draw. With the elastic, you see, you fit your form stuff on it. So, and later on, for your chin, you place another elastic stripe around the chin, what you modeled, to get it back. So that's the elastic movable draw for this uh, bakalava method. If you make a structure, a mold, so you have to make with clay your head, then glass polyester raisin, copy that in one way, and then you cut out your thing. Then you need mechanics, an angle where you can move your lower your chin and place them about here, not here. No, you have no, no force here, but open it. Place them around here and use springs, whatever elastics to chuck them back. Uh, if the way, if, if that head, also possible to make a movable draw, like with the angles and mechanical parts. So possible. Yeah, I, I designed the pony head not to make that uh, actually because mm, well, ponies can talk. <laughs> uh, but for the design, that was the better idea for me. And yeah. Okay. Mehr? Mm, 
Also hier, okay. Here's actually going now on the method what I do. Here. I told you about stew form. The stew, isolating method measures. Here you see the plates. You see them? The, the, the horizontal layers? That's just sculptured out, out of the stuff. And that's what be used as a, as a mold later on for the vacuum forming. That's really cheap to make and really good to work on it. And even you can make the first you head out of that. So if, if you're quick and dirty, go in the, in the home improvement store, buy these mats, and just a grinder, sandpaper, and make your pony head. Later on, you just rip that horizontal layers into pieces again, and just cut out for your head the inside, and stick it together. Here, here's the base form of this, what you see here, of Kenny. <laughs> it's vacuum molded, plastic, but even here you see the layers of the foam. It comes through it a bit. And the sides, yeah, a bit more. Okay. There are also the good thing on my techniques, what I use here, or even with the foam stuff, you can always add a bit something. If not right on that, just add some foam on top. Examples are here. My wife's crocodile <laughs> was the problem. Hey, here. Hmm? You see the form is different to that one. But the base form is the same, that is. So I just modeled on top of some form on top to get this older looking style of, of, of this pony. And here are more. Is that visible? You see that? It's just the base, what you use there, what I have here, first then put on top some form to get another different looking. So always, you always can add on, on a base what you already have and add some form well, and get a different, different look. Here. You see it down there, this old? That's an older pony bike. <laughs> It was for a good girl, girlfriend of mine, I did that. She, was, she wanted to have a bit of the older style. And so... <coughs> huh? Huh? I thought... Oh! I... Scheiße! <laughs> Yeah, sorry about we have a problem. <laughs> I, I forget my room key in the room. <laughs> and there's the example what we would like to show you. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, really? Oh, second. Ah, no, no, no. Ah. Kannst du das hier verholen? <lacht> okay, any more questions on first years? Now. Well, I'm still kind of concerned, concerned about air ventilation, so can you please explain how, um, especially for the closed jaw taking, um, air circulation works? For the closed one? Yeah. For like that one? Yeah. If you have a hard base like the plastic or epoxy, epoxy raisin, just drill holes on it and cover it with mesh, like the mesh you have there. Uh, a hard structure like this one allows you to drill so many holes in it that, well, you just have a base structure of it. 
So just the air rushing through, it helps you a lot keeping down the ventilation, uh, keeping down the, the, hot, the, the hot air. You also can fit in fans, like computer fans, whatever. You drill holes in it, place it at 40 millimeters, what the standard computer fan is, place one there, place one there, place one there, place one there. So many you like, 20, 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then just place a battery part on it, a switch so you can switch on if you need it. That helps you a lot, cooling down. But there are also an old mm, way to kill, cool down. You know, these uh, ice packs, these blue ice packs, flexible ice packs. That's I do usually, I put, if I have a fridge or whatever, I put one before in. That kill, keeps you cooling down the, ho the whole air in the head. Helps you at least half an hour, then place another one in it, that's all right. <laughs> or you, when you create your fursuit head or your pony head, just place some pockets inside where you can place some of these bags in it. Or that's it. The easiest way. And doesn't get rots away because of the sweating. Uh, any more questions? I've got one more. So uh, if you walk around at a convention and stuff, um, did it ever happen to you that a person might get broken or stressed out? So um, uh, how do you repair those? To repair the head or the bodies or whatever doesn't matter. What. Yeah, the problem is if you if you make a modular uh, the modular system like I do described here underneath underbody top fur body you always come to the to the sewings again. You just turn them over, sew it again. That's it. The head is a bit more complicated. If it breaks, maybe a form head, the glue doesn't stick together anymore. Maybe rotten. Do it again. With the plastic head here, no problem. Just get plastic, hot fan, stick it in. <laughs> Structure the head again. <laughs> so the advantages, disadvantages of each method. Where we've got one is cheaper and faster. One is more complicated, like with mold makings and modeling. But mm, from the mold making, you can make copies. If you just model it and cover it, no model there. Do it again. Different. <coughs> so another question, yeah? Uh, what if you want the till on your person? What if you want the till on your person? Tail. 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 Like uh, this thing. A tail. A tail. <laughs> OK, no problem. Uh, because we have this hard structure underneath, this undersuit, maybe the diving suit, maybe a lycra suit, whatever, you just attach them inside the suit. You sew a sock, like this ponytail, looks like later on, and sew it on the, on the, on the suit. And later on you make, a, again with the brown packing tape, a cutting pattern of that what you did, place them on the paper, on flat paper, and just Draw your nice tail. Cut them out, cut, sew them together, and stuff them over it. That's it. The best is model your forms before you stuff them up. So you know, then you know what you can get. You see, all the muscle parts, what I did, was all done before. I don't have to look anymore. Modeling with the fur on top. Just put them on, that's it. When you have before the thing model on your tape dummy, you're ready. The other thing is just a handcraft, just sew the stuff, sew the stuff together. That's it. The modeling part is that part you have to place time in it. The later on is just handcrafts. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you can also go f further then. I have another. Ah, come on here. Let me see the, the workshop. Here a couple of pictures, complete suits. What it can look like, different show, show you different. That's the, the suit of my, of my wife, 
this crocodile pony complete. Different to that one, to Kenny. <laughs> Bit older looking, crossbreed, whatever. That's imagination. So, and it also has a crocodile tail, like a more dragon tail on it. <laughs> this actually, this tail is also fully modeled with Hallo? Ja, jetzt geht's wieder. Oh, oh, hallo. Oh, oh, yeah. Back to the tails. <laughs> this tail is also stuffed up before and then covered with this method, what I described, with the packing tape and making a flat pattern and soon together after this and just make it over like a sock. This sock will be, will be later on sewed on the first suit, actually on the fur of the suit and just put all over it like a... Hmm, like another dress over your muscle dress. That's it. So the body is already finished. Here another picture. Well, presenting is also something that's very important in the first suit. If you can't present them, then we're going in a, in a couple of minutes on that. Here another pictures of it. So. <laughs> But we're more on G4 ponies here. And... This guy we already had here. <laughs> here is actually Kenny on the building, on the nearly end building, on this, on this tape dummy there. So, this was the part what I said aside, hmm, ponies are nice. But naked ponies? Ah, they need some dress. <laughs> so, and you, you saw walking around Kenny here on the stage and whatever, so it was the first idea just to make a simple dress on it to get a bit more color and it will dress up and later on get more dresses. So I just make a simple one. The first was up with the, in the hair. Hey, here. Hey. So here you see some, some parts of the dress. But when I see it here now and I see the cutie mark, that's a good idea at the moment. How to make a cutie mark? Ideas? Well, we can stick them just on with sticking tape. <laughs> Removable, no, it is not that. Uh, an example for the candy one, I used the t-shirt printing method. Simple t-shirt printing, you know, like printing out on a uh, inkjet printer and with the iron, put them on, on uh, some uh, fabric, that's it. And just sew around the surroundings, like an old patch, what you stick on, on, on jackets or whatever, and then sew it on. That's if you have a complicated form and lots of colors in it. So another way what I did on another costume, using artificial leather, Kunstleder. Just make a draft in a computer program, print it out, cut it out, and sew it on. That's why. Another way is you make airbrush. If you're good in airbrush, you also can airbrush it on. Only problem is with the fur and the length, so it's washed a bit away the sharp lines. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And in a couple of minutes should be the next stage of the presentation here. So I start now with a bit talking about this thing. <laughs> I know. You're more on the G4 ponies here. So 
my girlfriend, a friend of mine, is more in his, the historical ones, the older ones. So, but she wanted to have a combination of the fur, of both. So he gave me that as example. That's her character. So, uh, yeah. And she gave me some reference sheet. The reference sheet is very important when you start a fursuit. You need some base to create. I can make it like just starting in my mind creation. If you're not that experienced, just have a reference sheet. Ask a drafter. Lots of them around here. But I can present them that they draft your character or use a pony creator, whatever, to make your character. I hope she's coming now. So that was the next step. <laughs> Transforming the old one in a new one. <laughs> so the base is clearly what it was. So, and here, yeah, that I found on the internet. Yeah. Huh? Four, four x two. Come to. So, I just have to stretch a bit of time. Any questions further on fursuit making? Now I'm open for any question. Uh, how do you make a uh, lo long mane or long tail like Fluttershies or something like that? Oh, okay. <laughs> that is complicated. You can use the method what they use for the small ponies, for the splashies. Like you make a structure, like the tail, what I did before, and cover it with short fur. But then it looks more like, yeah, not like a mane in that thing. What I used, I think the head going around here, is a longer fur. That's a 100 millimeter length of the fur and glued it on top and having nice looking like a hairdresser there, there's something, there's something, and then using hairspray. Hairspray is perfect for this making. <laughs> If you dress up your, your, your fursuit head or style them, use hairspray. And because the hairspray is like a, a covering, it also is good for the dirt. If you later comes dirty again, you easily can wash it up by it. So, because you have this hairspray down there. And you can style and dress with the hairspray anything you like. So, but only 100 millimeter of length of fur. That's a problem. So, I did a combination on the canny head. Where is it? Hello. Then just put them up a bit. You see that, the front? That the hair's going a bit up there. So I used the cutting pattern method, so structure down and the long fur together to get a more big mane looking like. But even that is not enough when you make a mane like Fluttershy or whatever with the long hair. <sighs> there you need, if you make it really proper, cosplay hairs and sew them together in parts, but that can be very expensive. So you need, I think you need at least five to six weeks sewing together and dressing up over a structure to get his hairs out. Another method is uh, what I have here. Okay, here. Yeah. This fur is stretch fur. It's also available. That's, that, that stuff stretches 300 percent. So, and it's made on a wig machine. So, and the good thing is, it's a bit longer than the 100 millimeters, and it's more dense, like this uh, fabric fur. It looks more like hairs. Just. It's alternative material what you can use. But, uh, but this stuff is so expensive that 30 on 30 centimeters costs you $25. And that's just if it's produced. If you're not, it's not produced, you have to let produce and you have to take at least 10 meters. <laughs> so that's a couple of thousand dollars. So that's a scrap piece what I had left over. So. I had lying it around and mm, no use for it, so why not using for this guy? Actually, 
that they just did before the convention, doing the male pony. <laughs> so the female was done, and then was a request doing the male. Just let him go a bit around here, using the same techniques. Another question on ponies? The wings, maybe, or? Wings, interesting? Yes. Yeah, okay. How we do wings? Well, we can make a, a structure with metal pieces underneath or plastic stripes, like a, a rough sculpture of the wings, and then you pl put the foam and glue on this mat on these pieces. And later on, you're covering. Yeah, later on, you're covering with fur or with textile, and then airbrush it. Is one way. I used for the ponies because they so much blush and it has a smooth foam. I sewed them actually. I made a, a, sewing, a cutting pattern, just rough, cut it out, and looked uh, at the reference sheet what it looked like. So, and then cut out the foam and just used another fabric and make a sandwich foam to sail. Hard to describe. So, hmm. Actually, you cut out the four, the, 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 the fur, sew them together, and then you stick the foam inside. And all together, you sew through it, like a quilt. Ever heard of quilting? No. Mm. So it, you made a structure with the sewing machine, sewing to form and the fabric. So it gives a harder structure, like the wings, like a, a feather. So and that all together will be sewed on on the on the bodysuit. So when my special guests coming here. You can see it, it's hard to describe. Hey, okay, she is coming. Go, oh, 10 seconds flat. <laughs> it's, a old, it's older pony, so 10 seconds flat. <laughs> 20. She said you won. Yeah. Welcome, Feuer, Feuerfunke. <laughs> yeah, come up here. <laughs> Need a hand? <laughs> so well, that's the combination, that's Feuerfunke. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, I described something about the suit, and now we're going to the wings quickly. You see here? Huh? That's quilting. So, swing over all stuff together to get a hard structure and put them on the body. That's it. But that stuff you also can. Uh, yeah? Huh? Oh, okay, that. <laughs> she plays with me. Okay. Oh, the thing is. Oh. Check this stuff away. <laughs> uh, yeah, so time to get to the last part of it, acting. Everybody, somebody, done it, done if you're acting once in a movie, whatever, yeah, 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 okay, acting is a very important part in the first suit. You can have a nice pony suit, you can have the nicest pony suit you have. If you stand around like a, a stager like that, well, we can stuff you up. <laughs> A suit life lives out of acting, performing, yeah. <laughs> making funny things with the people, with the crowd, and playing with them, you know? So, uh -huh. okay. And expressions, so. My, my recommendation, if you have the suit and you can't move around, maybe go in a, in a dancing school, whatever, and make some easy movements, 
or maybe ballet. It maybe clings strange to you as a guy, or maybe going to <laughs> make some ballet courses and whatever. But gives you a body, uh, body feeling to you. Uh, okay. Another good way, if you have a big mirror and you, you hoo -hoo, move around a big mirror and you see what the gas sticks coming through you. If you can stand a mirror like that, okay, that's not bad. That, oh. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then how to play with the crowd. So, play a bit with the crowd, you see. Hell, who? Who? Yeah, it's stupid but good. So. <laughs> and, here we go. That's it. <laughs> so, also a very important thing in the first year is you have to, your movements have to be overreacted a bit. If you move like a woman, like I move that, move like, move like Isla. And my thing that you don't see it, but in the first suit you have to put it a bit wider. Perfect. <laughs> oh, it's hot, yeah. So you go quickly, yeah. <laughs> so, another good thing for first suit performing, you should look old phantom movies. If you're from the 1920s, 1930s, of the last century. <laughs> they give you good examples for that. How to react with people without talking. But ponies talk. We can break a most important rule in mascot performing. Do not talk. Here we can talk. If you have the voice for that. <laughs> it's recommend, yeah. And yeah. Dancing is maybe something like Yeah. Easy dance movies. Yeah. yeah. Or what I learned a bit was with my wife, a bit line dancing, you know? <laughs> you know you know that stuff? <laughs> no? I come on easy moves. One, one, one. Yeah, like that. And if you see movies like that with many people with heads doing that. <laughs> You can imagine if there are four ponies or more doing that together. <laughs> Come on, left wing. Come, come, Dan. Eins, links. Yeah, genau. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just very hot up. It's very hot up here, so. Yeah, uh, performing. Overreact a bit, go with the crowd. Deal with them, play with them. That's the thing. What I can do. Yeah? One question we can open because it's very hot for her up here. Did you show the hooves? The hooves? Oh, okay. Show us the hooves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will end now with the perf perform performance of her, with the presentation of how to make the body suits and how to make the pony suits, and I wish you well a good making of them. I'm looking forward for next year to see more from others, from you. <laughs> Okay, that's it.
I wish you a nice con convention, still going on for a couple of hours. Thanks for the techniques up there. And thanks for all the organizers to let me present my making and my, mm, I hope not catastrophic uh, teaching what how to make it. <laughs> but you all impressed me a lot because I didn't done it in front of so many people <laughs> already. So, okay. Thank you very much for your attention.